Rojo Medved was confirmed by Parliament today as Veterans Affairs Minister with 88 votes in favor, 15 against and 30 abstentions. Social Democrat MPs had pledged their support in committee but did not vote to confirm the nomination today. The new minister fills a seat that has been vacant since late January when Mio Tsunoya stepped down amid controversy over a property scandal after only six days in office. Croatian lawmakers are voting today on the government's draft budget. The document projects revenue in the amount of 114.9 billion kuna and spending in the amount of 122.4 billion kuna, which puts the deficit at 7.5 billion or 2.2 percent of GDP. MPs have submitted 94 amendments to the budget. One of three which passed this morning is an amendment that would cut some money for funding political parties and divert 7.5 million kuna to the Croatian Science Foundation. The government opened negotiations today with public sector unions over a deal promised to unions seven years ago that would have granted them a 6% pay hike if the economy recovered. Deputy Prime Minister Bojo Petrov, who is representing the government, is expected to face a major challenge. With a significant deficit and a ballooning public debt, the government is under pressure to tighten its belt and did not include the 1.8 billion kuna the raise would require in its draft budget. Prime Minister Tihomir Oreshkovic visited today the cutting-edge electric car maker Rimac Automobili and met with owner Mate Rimac. The innovative entrepreneur had spoken out publicly in recent weeks about the government's apparent lack of interest in attracting a major auto manufacturer to produce their products in Croatia. Rimac said his idea was to offer his company to act as an intermediary with auto industry companies looking for a place to set up production, while the government's job would be to offer the kind of conditions that would attract such investment. Slovenia's controversial razor wire fence along parts of its border with Croatia might be coming down within weeks, according to a report published in the paper Jutarni List. Slovenia's Prime Minister Miro Cera reportedly promised Croatia's Prime Minister last week in Brussels that his country would remove the barrier. Prime Minister Oreshkovic did not confirm the report completely today, but did say that with the Balkan migration route now closed, it was time for a change. Hajduk beat Dinamo 1-0 on Sunday in split, casting some uncertainty on whether Dinamo will take the championship. Hajduk outplayed Dinamo especially in the first half when Fran Tudor scored the winning goal. Dinamo upped their game in the second half but were unable to score. This is the first time Hajduk has triumphed over Dinamo in two and a half years. Dinamo leads the rankings with 63 points, but Rijeka is now only two points behind. Hajduk is down 13 points in third place. This afternoon's forecast calls for cloudy skies in most of Croatia. There is a chance of rain primarily in the mountains and on the coast, where heavier downpours and thundershowers are possible. The far north of the country will stay mostly dry, with even a few sunny spells. The coast may also see some intermittent sunshine. A moderate to high southeasterly wind is expected along the coast, reaching gale speeds in places. The day's highs will range from 10 to 14 degrees Celsius in the interior and from 13 to 17 degrees on the coast. Variable windy and cool weather will take us into midweek in the interior. There will be occasional rain mostly on Wednesday when there is also a chance of snow in the mountains. The mornings will be brisk with a moderate, strong on Wednesday, northeasterly wind. The days will be cool as well. The coast can also expect variable weather with rain until Thursday. Wednesday will be particularly wet. There will also be a high northeasterly wind, especially on Wednesday, and a northerly on Thursday, which will keep temperatures relatively low.